Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Brittany. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I made the poolside pina colada bonbon from my Barbie box. I've seen this technique done a couple of times and I couldn't wait to give it a try myself. When I had the idea to do a swimming pool themed chocolate, this technique immediately came to mind because the pattern that it creates reminds me of the reflections that you see on top of water. I've never seen it done with two similar colors. Usually I see it done with two really contrasting colors, which looks really cool. But for it to look like water, I thought that the colors needed to be close to the same and the top one needed to be a bit lighter. So I used a, like, a light sparkly blue for the, the reflection pattern and a darker, brighter blue for the background. And before we get going, just a couple more things about the technique itself. To make the pattern, we use a stamp. In order for the technique to work, the stamp needs to be the exact same size and shape of the mold, which means the stamp has to be made inside of the actual mold that you're going to use. So to create the stamp, we're going to use chocolate. And to use the stamp, you dip them in cocoa butter and put them in the mold. And once they're used, there's not really much else we can do with the stamps. You could experiment with wiping the stamps off and reusing them, but I think eventually they would just get messy and maybe start to leave behind dry cocoa butters that you don't want inside your mold. You could also try to eat the leftover chocolate stamps, but it might be difficult because there, there will be toothpicks in them, which could be a little bit dangerous. <laughs> For me, I've been focusing on working with just chocolate and transitioning fully away from using compound chocolate and candy melts as much as possible. So actually, I thought this would be a great use for the supplies that I still have left. They aren't that great to eat anyway. Well, compound chocolate's pretty good, but especially candy melts and this technique allows me to use them without just throwing them away or letting them sit in the cupboard so long that they expire. Anyway, let's get into the design. Here are the supplies that you'll need. Some cocoa butter. Today I'm using pre-colored cocoa butters from Chef Rubber. The first one is aqua blue and the second one is ice blue zircon. And I mixed that one with a little bit of white to make it more opaque and a little bit lighter around polycarbonate mold. I'll link some good options in the description box below. Some compound chocolate, candy melts, or tempered chocolate. Today I'm using Van Leer dark compound chocolate. Some toothpicks. A large, soft, round paintbrush. A disposable piping bag. And some paper towels and a chocolate scraper. Make sure that you start with a clean and polished chocolate polycarbonate mold. And then with your tempered chocolate, candy melts, or compound chocolate in a piping bag, you are going to carefully fill the cavities up to the top. I do about eight cavities at a time. Next, tap out the air bubbles and scrape the edges clean so the chocolate is flush with the top of the mold. The reason I do about eight cavities is because I want the chocolate to have time to begin to set up so that it will keep the toothpick standing up straight, but I don't want it to set up too quickly to where I can't get the toothpicks in at all. And I find that about two rows in the mold is just right for that. So once the chocolate reaches that perfect in-between consistency, I take two toothpicks and just put them down into the center. The goal is to stick them almost all the way to the bottom, but you just always want to be careful not to scratch your mold. Once I have all of my toothpicks in, I move on to the next and repeat the same process until the whole mold is full.
Once you've got all your cavities filled and the toothpicks are in, you can put the mold in the fridge for about 30 minutes. Something to keep in mind is that you will want to use the stamps at room temperature. You don't want to use them while they're cold or else the cocoa butter will set up too quickly. So creating the stamps is a good step to do ahead of time. Once the stamps are all set up, take the mold out of the fridge. You can torque the mold a couple times to release the stamps from the mold and then leave them to sit at room temperature for about 30 minutes. And I just leave them inside the mold because it's a nice holding place for them. Now once your stamps are totally prepared, you can move on to decorating. First, you'll temper your cocoa butter. I've already done this, and for the first step, I'm using the ice blue zircone plus the white cocoa butter. To create the design, I take one stamp and dip it about halfway into my cocoa butter, and then I drip a bit off. Then I place it straight into the cavity, and I give it a firm press down. I usually press until I see a little cocoa butter come out from one edge of the stamp and mold. Then carefully pull the stamp up. I use the toothpicks to help along with a finger on the chocolate to stabilize things and also to prevent accidentally spinning the stamp. Now on this second cavity, I pressed a little too hard and so I didn't like the design that it left behind. There were too many blank spots. So I just wiped my stamp off a little bit and redid the process. With more practice, I learned that if you're quick, you can just go right back in without wiping off the stamp. This technique definitely takes a little practice, but it is fairly easy. When you try it out, you'll learn how much cocoa butter to put on the stamp, along with how much pressure to give the stamp to get the results you're personally looking for. If you put too much cocoa butter on the stamp, you won't see as much of a design. If you don't put enough, your design might be a circle inside the cavity and not go all the way up to the edge. If you press too hard, it can push all of the cocoa butter up and out and won't leave much of a design behind. But if you don't press hard enough, you will just have a lot of cocoa butter left in the mold and also not have much of a pattern. <laughs> After you stamp one or two rows of cavities, be sure to use your chocolate scraper to carefully clean the surface of the mold without knocking any cocoa butter back into the cavities. And here are all my used stamps. I think I might experiment with making some stamps using silicone. That way I could use this technique without so much waste. Stay tuned for a potential video on that. Now I just add a background with my tempered aqua blue cocoa butter. To do this, I apply the color using my large soft round brush and swirling the cocoa butter in a thin coat around the whole cavity. To be sure that my chocolate doesn't show through, I do two coats of this. And here are the final bonbons unmolded. They are filled with an Almond Joy copycat filling, which I will show you how to make in next week's video.
All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and that you learned something new. If you liked it, please let me know by giving it a like and leaving me a comment down below if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. Today's the day. If you'd like to see something else that's sweet, just click on one of these thumbnails. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you soon. Bye.